release your prophetic insight that we may grab revelation tonight in Jesus' name. I want to shout out to all those who've been following us and watching us. Amen. All those who sowed into this house. And my brother-in-law, Kenny, who listens to us every night as he goes to sleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory to the Lamb. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now think about that for a second. A child's going to be born to us known as Might Almighty God. There's no one who's been born according to the name of Almighty God. No one. No one. No matter what religion, there is not one human being known as the Son of Man, the Son of God, and with a name of Almighty God, Prince of Peace. No one. No religion. There's no other book with the name that re represents any kind of a head of religion that calls himself Almighty God. There's a couple false individuals that call themselves Majesty. As a title, but no one has ever been called Almighty God in human form. Let's go further. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts, which means Lord of the army, will perform this. A child of God came into this realm. Think about that. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 6. He is known as the man from heaven. Everyone say the man from heaven. And I think the Lord likes to play things with, you know, his children. He loves to play hide and seek. It's his best game. But there's so many other things, man. I'm driving, and all of a sudden, he starts downloading me with all this stuff. I'm like, man, I'm driving. How can I write any of this stuff down? You know, like, and uh, so then, but some of it is for personal, and then nuggets come from that to be released. You know, it's like, man, how can I write any of this down? Hallelujah. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 6, let's speak it. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. It is, this, it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is what? Truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, and that is the true reality. Amen? Amen. The Father. Now, if you look at it, he's ca talking from heaven towards earth. The Father. What's the next one? The Word. And the what? And the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. So look at the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Then he says, and there are three that bear witness on earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. So what connects this, the, the, uh, 
the reality, the two realities, the temporary and false reality, amen, and the eternal reality and the true reality is the Holy Spirit. Does everybody get it? Now look at this again. Look at where it says, and there are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. What is the first chamber of the tabernacle? The blood. Amen? Somebody get that. The first chamber of the tabernacle is the blood. And the Bible tells us that we're to wash with the word. So the second chamber is associated with the word also. And then the third chamber is associated with the spirit. Is everybody with me? So what connects the physical realm to the spiritual realm is the Holy Spirit. Does everybody get it? So, all these people that are saying they're spiritual, without the Holy Spirit, they're not connected to the true reality. It's impossible. It's a false reality. It's a demonic realm. Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. As where he deceives people. Oh, I'm so spiritual. Have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Well, no. Well, then how spiritual can you be? Let me share something with you. And this was something, well, the, I mean, there's so many things that were downloaded, but one of the things the Lord revealed to me, he says, I visit all my children. I visit every single one of them. Now, sometimes we're looking for a visitation, you know, like a person knocks on your door and says, hi, I'm here. That's not how he does it. I'm not saying he can't do it, but he can come in any form that he, yet you just don't know it. He already, already visited everyone probably. You just thought it was your mailman or something, you know. But he said to me, I visit them with my touch. That's why I baptize them in the Holy Spirit. See, there's no other relationship of religiosity where God visits them except for through Christ with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's a touch and visitation from the Lord. Many people mi miss it because God's been trying to visit them, but he pre prepares individuals for a visitation. He won't visit the proud. You may have to slap him off a horse occasionally. But he visits the humble. The humble. God rejects the proud, but he gives what? Grace to the humble. See, God knows exactly what we're doing. Amen? See, man might not know what you're doing. God knows what you're doing. He knows it all. Nothing's hidden. Amen? You may think you're faking out man. In fact, you may be faking out yourself. But you can't fake him out. <laughs> no way. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. Three bear witness in heaven. Three bear witness on earth. There's a Holy Spirit that connects the earth of the false reality to the heavenly realm of true reality. So without the Holy Spirit, can you truly walk in true reality? No. What if you have the word? Can you still walk in true reality? No. Even the devil knows the word inside now. Without the Holy Spirit, there's no connection. Amen? And the blood of Jesus Christ always goes before the Spirit because there's got to be a cleansing before the Spirit attaches himself. Oh, glory. John chapter 1, in verse 14. Remember, the three witnesses that were in heaven are the what? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And they are what? One. One. So, it says in verse 14, and the Word became physical or flesh, right? So, if the Word became flesh and physical, did the Father come too? Yes. Does everybody get it? Because they're one. <laughs> Amen? 
and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten uh, of the Father, full of grace, which is his plan, and truth. Does everybody see that? The words, word of God became physical in a temporary realm of a false reality. So Jesus knew everything was false here. He knew it was, he came into the matrix. He knew it. He was given the name above all names. Amen? But he came from the true reality realm so he could connect those and bring them in to the true reality and begin to open their eyes, ears, and hearts so that they not only receive from heaven, but they would be able to be able to see the false reality that they live in. In John 10, verse 11. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The sh good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the harling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The harling flees because he is a harling. Why? He, he, he follows money. He only does anything for money. Amen? And does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Amen. Now the Bible says that Jesus has come to bring us what? Life and life abundant. It says in verse 10 that the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Life abundantly with one shepherd whom gives his life for the sheep. That's why he came in here. He knew he had to shed blood, but he created his own blood. Hebrews 10 in verse 3. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Therefore, when Jesus came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body. A what? A body you have prepared for me. A body that was prepared for Jesus. Hallelujah. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins. You had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I come in the volume of the book as it has written me to do your will, O God. Previously saying, previously saying sacrifices and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin, you did not desire nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. A body was prepared for the man of heaven. Amen. And Leviticus chapter 17. You know, we don't realize this. But God being sinless, amen, and the body was prepared for him and so forth, entered this body with no sin. His blood was not contaminated. It was pure from God. His body was made from the Word, amen. A body was prepared for him. Now, think about this for a moment. 
a body was prepared for your, your new spirit. The whole time. God was preparing you, your body, born in sin, amen, servant of darkness, in darkness. He was waiting to pull us out of darkness so he can place a new spirit in us, in that part. Think about this. So it's almost like reverse, you know. <laughs> we are here already because that's why he says it started, it, in other words, for us it started in the physical realm so that we could end up in the spiritual realm because of the body. We had to come here. Hallelujah. Think about this. Spirit means breath. Spirit means what? Breath. Woohoo! Leviticus 17, verse 10. It says, for the life of the flesh or the body is in the blood. The life of the flesh or the body is where? In the blood. That's why when you go to a doctor, the first thing they're going to do is give you a blood test. They want to know how bad we are. <laughs> they want to know how messed up we are. And then they have their standards by the uh, medical association that, you know, people get a blood test and they get all these results. Like, oh, my God. I'm going to die, you know, this, that, whatever. And it's because they ate pizza two days before they had the blood test, you know, or something like that. <laughs> you know, so their cholesterol went up. I'm telling you, whatever, you can eat two candy bars in your blood. You can take certain vitamins and your blood test will be all over the place. Believe me, I've been through it. <laughs> but the life of the body is in the blood. And he says, I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Then he says, therefore, I said to the children of Israel, and of course, all humanity, no one among you shall eat or drink blood, nor shall any stranger who dwells among you eat or drink blood. Somebody get it. Whatever man of child, uh, childhood, ch children of Israel, or of the strangers who dwell among you, who hunts and catches any animal or bird that may be eaten, it shall be poured out its blood and cover it with dust. That's why when they, people go out deer hunting and stuff, they, they hang the animal upside down so the blood drains. Hello? You know that the blood you get in the stores, it's a preservative. It's a dye. People think it's the real blood of an animal. No, it's a preservative dye. Or else that meat would be brown in one day. It wouldn't last long out in the free, uh, out in the cool. I was a, I was a, uh, I used to work for the health department. I actually had to do volunteer services when I was younger. And uh, <laughs> anyway, so. <laughs> I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll be uh, an inspector or something. Like that. Of course, I wanted to be a drug dealer instead, you know. But anyways, um, yes, I had to take all these. I was reading all these books and all their exams and whatever. And come to find out that the the red, supposedly red blood that we were eating and cooking was actually a red dye to preserve the meat. Hallelujah. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to go drink the blood, out, you know, that dye out of it. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> so please understand that, the <laughs> remember, a body was prepared for the man of heaven. He brought his own blood. Amen? Why? Because the life of the body is what? In the blood. In the blood. Human body is a unique composition of cells, tissues, and organs. Housing a spirit of breath. Housing a what? Spirit of breath. Hallelujah. It's, uh, it's attached to the soul, which has thoughts, a mind of thought, emotions, a conscience, a will of choice, and senses. Uh, we, allow, we are able to have vision and sight and imagination, yet still connected when we are unsaved still connected 
to the true reality by conscience. That's where conviction came from, right? Does everybody understand that when we were out there? There was a conviction. We knew we were doing the wrong things. Because it was to, we were connected to the true reality. Not born again to access the true reality, but connected still by conscience because he so loved us. No matter what we did, he wanted us to be able to make it home. Amen? <laughs> connected to the conscience of the reality unknowingly. When we just thought it was us. But we used to talk to ourselves all the time. Do you ever wonder who you're talking to? Yeah, I think I should think. What do you think? What I think I should. Who are you talking to? Hallelujah. <laughs> now we were engulfed in the human nature. Controlled by deception and fear in this realm. Uh, to death do we part. <laughs> Hello. That's how we were born in this realm. Think about this. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. But Christ came as a high priest of the good things to come. With a greater, more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation. Does everybody see that? Not of what? This creation. Because he was the tabernacle. That's why he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So he was going to pay the price to open that portal so you and I could be connected to the eternal realm of the true reality. Through his manufactured true blood, that he made for the pure blood to be sacrificed for us because a body was prepared for him. God Almighty. Hallelujah. All right. Verse 12. Not with blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place. Where's the most holy place? Third chamber of the tabernacle. Once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of the body or the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself, do you hear this, through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. You know, for prophetic insight, if you recall, when Moses came down, when Moses received the law of the Ten Commandments, and when he came down from the mountain and saw all the Israelites that were worshiping their golden calf again, it's like, what the snap? They just, all this stuff happened. They just got released from uh, uh, bondage and for 100, 400 years of slavery. They just saw the ocean split. I mean, the sea split. Come on. And the fire being, all of these things. And one of those bosses goes, and says, man, I'm going to go spend some time with God and we're going to find out what we're supposed to do. So Moses comes down and uh, he comes with the commandments of, that God said, look, at this is going to expose sin. And he sees them worshiping the calf. What does Moses do? He gets in the flesh. And he throws the commandments. <laughs> What's the matter with you guys? Well, that was prophetic because it was known as covenant. It was the first covenant. And we know that the first covenant was going to be broke and another covenant would come forth because the first covenant was about the law. The second covenant would be in the spirit. It's different. Totally different. That's why it's the things that you speak now. That's why the Bible says the spirit gives life, but the letter what? 
killed. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. The blood of Christ cleanses us from evil presence. Yes. John 3, verse 10. So when you repent, it manifests because it is the ministry of the Spirit. When you repent, the blood of Christ is activated. And Jesus answered and said to them, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Why? Because Jesus was going to become the serpent. Does everybody get this? How was he going to become the serpent? He was going to take all humanity's sins. So here we go again. There is no other religion, amen, no other, beliefs, no other belief system where God Almighty, name God Almighty, has come in a human form and has taken all the sins of the world onto himself. No one, no one, only Jesus. Muhammad, Buddha, none of them. They can't even drink coffee. None of them. All of these religions that proclaim. Man, I talk to people that say they're Christians and they don't believe in the Trinity. I said, man, you ain't a Christian. They believe if you don't worship and gather together on Saturday, you're going to hell. Well, they call that the true Sabbath. The word Sabbath means rest. It's not a day. It's a relationship. We should be resting in the Lord every day. Amen? <laughs> Again, there's so much foolishness that the powers of darkness have created doctrines of demons, false religions. But there is only one man from heaven that put on a body. A body was prepared for him. He created his own blood paid the price, shed that blood, took sins on of, of all, all humanity, became the serpent. Remember when uh, the Lord got upset with the Israelites, the serpents bit him. The Lord sent serpents. And they all got messed up. And the Lord told Moses, all right, man, all right. Take some bronze and make a serpent and put it up on a pole. That's where they got the medical sign from. And the, they ever see the medical sign with the serpent through it? And if they look on that, they'll be healed. But it was everybody, he was telling everybody because it was prophetic insight. If you look on Jesus, they'll be healed. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. The word believe means to what? Follow. So you can't say you believe Jesus and not follow him. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Woohoo! Again, Jesus came into this world, the man from heaven, from the true reality, 
and came to the place of the sins, reality, the realm of sins. And his body became the serpent of sin for all, all those who would, humans, and received, uh, who would receive him as a savior, who repented, and would follow the Lord. Again, only one, no other, has ever come as almighty God, the creator, or taken on humanity's sin. Amen. In 1 John chapter 3, in verse 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of God, the man from heaven, was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Amen? Now, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. It's that simple. That's why he sacrificed, he sacrificed himself. In Ezekiel 36, that those who are born again do not approve of sin. That means you're a born-again state of being. There's a born-again state of being where you are born again, connected to the Spirit of God, and you are diligent, alert, and consistent. You carry the fear of God, and so in that, you will avoid sin, and if you make a mistake, you repent quickly. You won't associate it with those who practice sin. Amen? But you'll expose the sin. Ezekiel 36. In verse 23. And Jesus said, And I will, sacrifice, I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations all shall all know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am howled in you before their eyes. Now, before B.C., before all of us, amen, before we were born again, we were profaning in the name of the Lord, whatever it was, you know. But once we got separated, sanctified, baptized in the Spirit of God, we became born again. And we acknowledged the Lord, and the world saw that we were different. They wanted to know why we wouldn't run with them no more. Why didn't we laugh according to their jokes that were not very nice? Why didn't we cuss anymore? Why didn't we want to do it? Why didn't we drink anymore? Why didn't we party anymore? Why didn't we want to have anything to do with that anymore? This is how God was beginning to get glorified. Believe me, when my wife saw me, I mean, we weren't married then. We were married eight years and divorced for three years. But when she saw me get off that plane, she knew I was a totally different person. In fact, she called me an alien. Poked me. Who are you? I mean, you're, you're you, but who are you? And then when I would separate myself and pray in tongues and talk to my dad, she was really freaked out then. But then she wanted what I had because she knew I was a different person. There was no cussing. There was no nothing. There was, I was gentle, slowed down, believe it or not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 24, we'll continue there. He says, for I'll take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you. What's water associated with the word? Amen. And you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. And I will give you a new heart and put a what? New spirit or new breath within you. Why? 
put a new spirit. He's going to give you a new heart. In other words, new desires and a new spirit because the body was prepared for a new one. You are living in it. You know, think about this body, so uniquely made. You know, it, 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 it can almost function without us, but it needs us to complete its function. You know what I'm saying? And, and when you understand the anatomy of the body and how it's created, it's pretty amazing. But what a unique thing. It's like a machine. But it's biological and so forth machine. You know, it's tissues and stuff like that and whatever, and, and nerves and whatever. And it has a soul. It has a mind and so forth. And, but all of this time, it was living in the false reality, connected, serving the false reality, born in the spirit with a new spirit, a new breath, a new heart, new desires. And the, during the whole time, God was sustaining that body all the way. And I'll give you a new heart and a new spirit within you. And I'll take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh or heart that's after him. And I'll put my spirit. Oh, man, now we got an assistance. I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Does everybody get this? In other words, without the Holy Spirit, there's no connection. Without the Holy Spirit, we've got no power to submit and obey. It's impossible. A new heart, new spirit, a new breath. The Holy Spirit of God with a divine nature and a new covenant. We were washed by the blood of the Lamb to overcome the attacks of temptations and distractions that the enemy tries to keep us from our eternal seats. A place of position and a communication in the true reality to the Father of all creation. That's what the enemy is trying to do. <laughs> we were captured in a new identity of the reality as warriors in pursuit of his enemies now and the dismantlement of all their regimes. We hate evil. We used to hate things, but it was a wrong hatred. Now there's a righteous hatred. The Bible talks about righteous anger. It's righteous now. It's totally different. As a new creation in Christ, We've got to begin to look in this area that in this temple is a new spirit, a new breath, assisted by the Holy Spirit to connect us all the time to the Father. That's why we know we're children of God. It keeps us in the place of identity. Now, as we go through the process of converting the soul, we get a new thought. Woo! I'm telling you, after I got born again, I never saw ants look so cool. I would stop and look at everything. This is wild. I was like a kid that just got a toy called the Earth. I remember driving home one day in the top, the sunroof was open. I said, oh, my God, I'm on a planet. How did I get here, Lord? I don't get all this stuff. What's this all about? He says, you don't have to know it all, guy. Just trust it all. Amen? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 40. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is shown, is swollen in, in corruption. It is raised in what? In corruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. Yes. It's sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in natural body. 
It has raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, and the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward, the spiritual. The first man was the earth made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of, the, of dust. And as the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. For as he is on earth, so he shall be in heaven. Amen. Very powerful of what's happening. As the man from heaven came, I'm closing here. It's something to be remembered about. It's something to be grateful and thankful for now. Because we have a new spirit. We have a new life. The world doesn't understand new life. They only understand what's in their paycheck. How much property, how much materialism, how much they own. They don't understand these things. And that's why God has rescued us, that we may be a sign of wonder to the world. But we, without his presence, we can do nothing. Without the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. Amen? That's what makes us new. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we thank you for preparing a body for your spirit, us. We thank you for taking the old and bringing the new. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the blood. And we thank you for the price Jesus paid. We thank you for the man of heaven, knowing that we will be in your image and likeness with a glorified body. We can't wait, Papa. We look forward to that new body prepared because of your shed body. Now, Lord, bless your people tonight. Bring revelation, bring visitation, and bring these things to remembrance that we always maintain an attitude of gratitude for your glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.